Have you ever wondered how tissue paper is made? It's an everyday item we often take for granted, but behind each soft, absorbent sheet lies a fascinating process of transformation. From humble wood chips to the delicate product we know and love, the journey of tissue paper is a marvel of modern manufacturing. It's a story of science, engineering, and a dash of everyday magic. So if you're intrigued by the unseen processes that shape our world, stay with us to uncover the mystery behind the making of tissue paper. The journey of a tissue paper begins with its raw materials. These are the fundamental building blocks, the very essence of every tissue paper you've ever used. The main players in this game? Wood pulp and recycled paper. Wood pulp, the primary raw material, is derived from trees. But not just any tree will do. Only certain types of trees like softwoods and hardwoods are chosen for their fibers that are ideal for tissue paper production. These trees are sourced sustainably from forests, making sure we give back to Mother Earth as much as we take. Recycled paper, on the other hand, is the secondary raw material. It's the unsung hero of the process, adding an extra layer of environmental responsibility. It's sourced from various places. Your home, offices, schools, and even that newspaper you read this morning could be part of someone's tissue paper tomorrow. It's a beautiful cycle of reuse and recycle, isn't it? Both these raw materials, wood pulp and recycled paper, play a crucial role in tissue paper production. Their unique properties, the strength from the wood pulp and the sustainability from the recycled paper, combine to create the soft, absorbent, and eco-friendly tissue paper we all know and love. Now that we know the raw materials, it's time to transform them into tissue paper. The first step in the transformation is called pulping. Now let's delve a little deeper into this process. Essentially, pulping is the initial stage where the raw materials, the wood chips or recycled paper, are broken down into a pulp mixture. To do this, the raw materials are mixed with water and chemicals in a large container called a pulper. Imagine it as a giant blender, spinning around at high speeds, reducing the materials to a soupy mixture. This process is a bit like making a smoothie, but instead of fruits and yogurt, we're using wood and water. Once we have this pulp mixture, it's not quite ready to become tissue paper just yet. It needs to be cleaned and bleached. The cleaning process involves removing any remaining impurities, such as dirt or plastic, that might have been mixed in with the raw materials. The pulp then goes through a bleaching process. This isn't just about making the pulp whiter, although that's a part of it. Bleaching also helps to eliminate any remaining lignin, a natural component of wood that can cause the paper to yellow or degrade over time. The result? A pulp that's clean, white, and ready for the next stage of the journey. And that's the pulping process in a nutshell. It's quite a journey from raw material to clean pulp, wouldn't you say? The pulp is now ready for the next stage, formation. With the pulp ready, we can now form the paper. This next step in our journey of tissue creation is paper formation, where our pulp mixture, full of interweaving fibers, starts to take shape. But how does this transformation occur? Well, it all begins with a wire screen. Imagine the pulp mixture, a soupy concoction, being poured onto a wire screen. This screen, almost like a sieve, is designed to drain away the water, leaving behind a mat of those interweaving fibers we mentioned earlier. It's a fascinating process, turning a watery mix into a solid sheet, all thanks to the magic of draining and drying. Now this mat isn't quite paper yet. It's still wet and it needs to go through a dryer to remove the remaining water. The dryer is a crucial part of the process, as it helps to solidify the mat and turn it into a recognizable paper form. You can think of it as the final transformational touch, the step that brings our paper into existence. However, this doesn't mean we're rushing the process. The drying needs to be done carefully, ensuring that the mat doesn't get too dry and brittle, but also making sure it's not too damp and weak. It's a delicate balance, a dance of drying that needs to be performed with precision and care. As the water evaporates, the mat becomes more and more like the paper we're familiar with. The fibers start to bond together, creating a strong, cohesive sheet. It's a remarkable transformation, watching the once liquid pulp turn into a solid, flexible paper. But there's a catch. While we've now formed the paper, it's important to remember that it's not yet tissue paper. Yes, we've come a long way from the raw materials, and we've formed a beautiful sheet of paper. But our journey isn't over yet, and there are still more steps to take before we reach our final destination. We have now formed the paper, but it's not yet tissue paper. Let's continue on to the next step, shall we? The final steps in the process are creeping and cutting. Now let's dive into how these two crucial stages transform our paper into the soft, absorbent tissue we use daily. First up, we have creeping. This is where the magic really happens. 
the freshly formed, still damp paper is passed over a giant heated drum, known as a Yankee dryer. This dries the paper and firmly adheres it to the drum. But we don't want our tissue stuck to a drum, do we? That's where the creeping blade comes in. This blade, made of metal, is positioned at a precise angle to the drum. As the drum rotates, the blade gently scrapes the paper off the surface. This process not only helps to free the paper from the drum, but also creates that distinctive crinkled texture we associate with tissue paper. Creeping is essential because it disrupts the fiber-to-fiber -fiber bonding in the paper. This disruption leads to a more flexible and stretchable paper. It's the creeping process that gives tissue its softness and absorbency, two qualities we all appreciate in a good tissue. Next up, we have the cutting process. After the paper has been creeped, it's still one long continuous sheet. To transform this into the tissues we know and love, it needs to be cut. The cutting machines are programmed to cut the paper into the desired size, depending on whether it's destined to become toilet paper, facial tissue, or paper towel. The paper is first cut lengthways, creating narrower rolls. These rolls are then cut crosswise into shorter lengths, forming individual sheets. The cutting process is highly precise, ensuring each tissue is the perfect size. And just like that, we have tissue paper. The creeping and cutting processes take us from a plain sheet of paper to the soft, absorbable, and conveniently sized tissues that we use in our homes, offices, and everywhere in between. These final steps bring us the tissues that make our lives a little bit easier and a lot more comfortable. So, there you have it. We've journeyed together through the fascinating process of how tissue paper is made, from the humble beginnings of raw materials to the final product you hold in your hands. Let's take a moment to recap this intricate journey. Our story began with the raw materials. The primary ingredient in tissue paper is wood pulp, which comes from trees. This is supplemented by water, chemicals, and sometimes recycled paper. These materials are carefully selected and combined to provide the quality and softness we expect from our tissue paper. Next, we delved into the pulping process. This is where the raw materials are transformed into a substance that can be turned into paper. The wood is broken down into fibers using mechanical or chemical methods, creating a pulp. This pulp is then cleaned and bleached to remove any impurities and achieve the desired whiteness. Each step in this stage is crucial in ensuring the strength and texture of the final product. From there, we moved on to paper formation. The pulp is spread out on a wire screen, allowing the water to drain away and leaving behind a mat of intertwined fibers. This mat is then pressed and dried to form paper. The thickness of the paper can be adjusted by changing the amount of pulp used, providing control over the final product's characteristics. After the paper has been formed, we arrive at the creeping and cutting stage. The paper is scraped off the drying cylinder with a metal blade in a process called creeping, which gives the tissue its soft, pliable texture. The paper is then cut into the familiar rectangular sheets we know as tissue paper. Each of these steps plays a vital role in creating the tissue paper we use daily. They all work in harmony to transform simple raw materials into a product that is soft, strong, and absorbent. It's a process that requires precision and care, reflecting the importance of tissue paper in our everyday lives. Next time you use a piece of tissue paper, remember the journey it went through to get to you. The trees that were harvested, the pulp that was cleaned and bleached, the paper that was formed, creeped, and cut. It's a testament to human ingenuity and the intricate processes that go into creating the simplest of items. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to hit subscribe for more fascinating insights.